49. We actually haven't been at the truck, driven it, started, done anything uh, since back in March of the St. Paddy's Day Parade. But uh, we're back today, got a few hours. We're gonna work on the ignition system today. Uh, finally, after phone calls and some straightening out and checking with numbers, um, I made the mistake on the Pertronics website of ordering the wrong ignition module. Um, not gonna lie, if you're uh, gonna go this route with Pertronics, I would say probably skip the website, give them a phone call uh, because the website's basic search criteria, at least for these older engines with multiple distributors, uh, didn't allow the options of putting in distributor model. I took my best guess, got the wrong one, had to send it back, which they fully refunded, no problem. Uh, but it took a phone call to get the right uh, ignition module for the distributor that's in Fire 49. So we've already ran around the truck, all the fluids are good. Everything's been fine since it's been sitting. No, uh, no new puddles underneath, which is always nice to find. The battery was a few volts low. We'll charge the battery up all the way, make sure we're starting with a full fresh battery. That way it just uh, saves battery life. Ensure the truck is running and everything is operational now. Once we've confirmed that, then we'll shut it down. Pull the distributor, pop in this little uh, ignition module, pull out the ballast resistor and see how it runs on a full 12 volt electronically triggered ignition system. So hang tight, we'll get to it. So that's not bad. That's the first time the truck has been started since mid-March. Uh, obviously cranked for a while, but if you notice, it wasn't a misfire or hard to start. Basically all that happened is over the two months since we last ran the truck, the uh, fuel in the bowl of the carburetor has evaporated out and the fuel pump took that amount of time to get fuel back from down on the frame rail where it's sitting at, pump back up and fill the float. But once fuel is back in the carb, fired right up with minimal throttle, just a little choking so. Obviously the old system's working fine, but the points are still in there, trying to get a little more out of it, reduce some maintenance. So we'll go ahead and uh, now that we know the truck is running and running fine, we've got a known good starting point. We'll uh, pop the distributor out, put in the uh, new ignition module, we'll remove the ballast resistor off the firewall that's currently reducing voltage to the coil, and then put it back together, ensure our timing is back where it's at now, and uh, see how it runs with the upgraded modern electronic ignition. All right, the distributor is out. Uh, as you see it right now, it still has the points in it. So there's a few things uh, show you kind of what we're removing, what's going in. So we'll just start, pretend the battery is over in this area. And what would happen uh, as we currently were set up, battery voltage 12 volts whoop, would come in here. This is the ballast resistor that's going away because that would take 12 volts in and about eight to nine volts would come out of the ballast resistor seen here. Once that voltage was reduced, it would come into the coil here. And then another wire, there's two windings in the coil, a primary and a secondary. Basically you charge one side, it causes the other side to become excited. Then when you collapse that charge, the secondary side discharges, that's what fires a spark plug. So spark plug fires from here, but 12 or actually nine volts uh, currently going in the coil comes out and it would come out to this little wire right here that's got the raggedy end on it that we had to make a roadside repair, but it comes in. Those are the points right there. And uh, we've shown before, but those would move. And every time those would move and break that contact, that would make the coil fire. What we're gonna replace is the ballast resistor is out. It's going away. This old original coil, uh, original style coil going away. Uh, this is a higher ohm, has more impedance. Uh, not truly a 12 volt coil that's going away then inside the distributor the condenser and the points are going away the condenser and the points get replaced by the ignition module from Pertronics here uh, does the same thing it breaks down uh, the uh, charge to the coil but does it electronically uh, more modern components and we've got one of their new flamethrower uh, coils there as you can see low resistance so uh, between the ability to handle 12 volts and the lower resistance Combined with electronic trigger, we should get a lot hotter spark uh, through all the RPM ranges from starting all the way up to RPM. So we're eliminating one, two, three, four components, replacing it with two, simplifying things, more modern, and we should have a lot hotter spark to help ignition occur completely inside the cylinders when it happens. So uh, once we get the new ignition module installed, we'll show you how that is before we stick it back in the truck. All right, we've got the distributor taken out, torn down. All of the old components are out. So the condenser, 
over here is out. Uh, that would have been attached electrically with the points here. This is the old points, uh, the insulator with the uh, insulator and the connection for the 12 volts coming from the coil. Uh, you can see, if you can see the duct tape on that, we actually had to make a repair on that. It's another reason to get rid of it. it uh, it's old, it's dry, it had cracked and was falling apart in the distributor. So uh, getting rid of a lot of old age components. Um, in behind this plate, which will clean very well before putting in the new plate, but uh, in behind there, in addition to the vacuum advance that you see here, there's also a mechanical advance. It's weights and springs that advance the timing as engine RPM increases. Uh, that should be checked in service, but we did that uh, back before the St. Patty's Day Parade. We know the components inside are free, working good, and operating as they should. So we're not going to take the breaker plate out and check all that because it's already been done and we're short on time. But just know all that is in behind there. You can go back to some older videos, see what's in there. But uh, we'll get this cleaned up. We'll get the new ignition module installed here and then uh, get the gap set and see if we can get Fire 49 fired back up with a new electronic ignition. Okay, super, super easy. That took maybe seven minutes. Uh, with everything else out, we cleaned up the breaker plate behind everything, the new Petronix module fit right in, uh, lined up. That's the old pivot pin for the points. Their plate was cut out uh, to fit over that. And then you simply use the old stock uh, retaining screw for the points there. The only adjustment was just getting the cam screw out of the way. That's the screw that used to be used to set the gap on the points. Uh, basically just had to get it moved and out of the way. The plate sets down on it. According to the directions, there's no adjustments. It should uh, be set back in here as the, uh, the cam rotates you should be able to see the lobes on the uh not the cam but the the lobes on the distributor shaft there but this hall effect switch is uh the intent is to pick up the lobes it'll create a uh a signal as they pass and this module will take that signal and say oh that's my peak it'll fire the coil goes out nice grommet resealed uh two wires now used to be just one wire this one has two because this module does need power so uh, this will go to the positive side of the coil, which will now receive 12 volts. That'll give it a 12 volt power signal. Still has the ground wire going to the uh, negative side of the coil, which is also the ground. So uh, power's up. We don't have to rewire or modify anything. We're just adding one extra wire from the distributor up to the coil to the positive side. That's the same as the uh, negative wire that was there before, but uh, it's ready to go to put back in. So we'll put it back in and sure our timing is back to where we took it out. And uh, we'll see if it fires up. The only other change will be We'll also be installing the flamethrower two coil, 12 volt coil in place of the older uh, older stock style. And hopefully things fire right up. We have no problems and we can go for a short drive today. Okay, a little handheld action here. Be a little shaky, but uh, just to show you what we've done. Distributors back in, all the vacuum advance, all that's hooked back up. That's the new coil also. So we do have two new components. If, we, if something doesn't work, we'll have to diagnose between the two. But uh, the final check before we try our first start the key is on. You can see the red ignition wire coming in there and test light. So we do have voltage to the coil, which also powers up. Uh, you can see there's two red wires on the ignition or the coil positive at this time. Uh, one is the 12 volts coming from the battery to the coil to power it. And then uh, the ignition module is piggybacking off of that to feed it 12 volts so it can operate. And then uh, like we had before, one wire back down uh, into the distributor on the negative side of the coil. Uh, that's the trigger wire for the ignition module. So with that said, everything's back in. The vacuum advance hooked back up. Timing is back to where we had it before. Uh, we have power. So per the instructions, uh, the truck should start and run with this. So uh, I'm going to cut the camera off and put it on a tripod, but no Hollywood magic. This will be a true first start. If it works, awesome. If not, we'll figure out why. But uh, Hopefully we're good, stand by. All right, true first attempt, Pertronics ignition module uh, that replaces the points, their flamethrower two coil. If this works, then uh, we now have a true 12 volt uh, electronic ignition system, no points. Hopefully uh, it works and it's trouble free, reliable, and starts on the first crank because we know the engine's running good. It fired right up uh, earlier on the old system. So let's see what happens.
Well, <laughs> such is life. So what didn't work? I don't know. We replaced two components, two are new. Uh, is the electronic ignition not triggering or is the new coil not so new and not working? We know we've got power, so uh, first time wasn't a charm. But so put the old coil back in, which should still work with the new ignition, at least enough to hit and see if we've got spark. If it uh, starts and runs or at least hits with the coil, we've got something with the uh, ignition module. We'll have to dig deeper, maybe call tech and see because there was no adjustment or anything for it. It's wired up the way the direction says. So uh, we'll see what happens. Sounded like maybe, there at the very end, maybe something tried to hit, could have been a compression spark or something, but it uh, doesn't sound like it have any spark. I'm gonna pull a plug uh, very quickly and we'll check and make sure that we actually don't have spark. There is a chance that somehow I'm off a tooth on the timing, but that'll usually still run really rough. But I'll confirm it's actually, absolutely not a spark or that there is no spark. If not, uh, with the known coil in there, I guess the distributor's coming back out, probably won't get a drive today. And uh, we'll be calling tech support being like, hey, what are we doing wrong? Or just finding out that uh, unfortunately maybe we got a bad part. We'll see. We'll pull. Uh, we'll check for spark if we don't have it. Pull the distributor back out and see what happens. Okay, all is not lost today. So uh, we messing around at uh, one of the previous starting attempts. Notice at the very end it sounded like maybe uh, maybe the engine had tried to start. Uh, switched out the coils. Still no luck. Started checking and I was getting spark. So with the plug out, checking the plug, I had a spark. Uh, which like, oh, well, if it's doing that, it's a timing issue. So pulled out the instruction sheets uh, that came with the ignition module and on the uh, troubleshooting on the back, it says if vehicle does not start, check your ignition timing because changing the module can throw it out by 10 to 15 degrees of timing. Uh, that's pretty significant. Uh, so went in, moved the distributor, played with the timing, initially got nothing, went back basically a tooth on the distributor, um, and advanced it a little more and it hit. So uh, it's like, oh, make it spark, it's trying to hit. Clearly, uh, probably much more than 10 degrees off. I don't know why, uh, maybe how the plate was in. I don't know, but uh, we've, I've moved it probably 20, 20, 25 degrees of timing now. And the truck, I was trying to bump it and see, and it actually started. So I'll start it now, you can hear it. Uh, the distributor still is not locked down at this point. I think I'm fairly close where I can do it with the distributor adjustment adjustment screw but the truck is running again it started up so uh, i'll try an attempt on camera now you can see uh, how it runs with the new components but definitely some tuning to do Made it. We're back at the Vintage Fire Museum Annex uh, here in Oldham County and just put five or six miles on Fiery 49 with the new electronic ignition system. So all the points and that stuff are gone. The old coil is gone. The ballast resistor is gone. We're running true 12 volts to a, uh, a lower resistance coil, electronic trigger on the inside the distributor. And uh, wow, the performance difference. Uh, I don't have a unit of measure to say here it's better, like a horsepower number, but definitely drives better. It pulls better through the RPM ranges. It revs quicker in gear through all the gears. It doesn't stumble on idle if you plug it. Uh, it definitely, it doesn't have the stumbles. Uh, that gear changes are coming out or rolling back in the throttle. Uh, all that's gone. It, it's, the truck is running great now. Like uh, issues that I thought were gonna be carburetor issues, carb circuit issues, I, I don't think they were. I think it was just the ignition was breaking down, especially at the higher RPMs. Not, never faltered, ran perfect, ran great, pulled good. Uh, definitely threw the gears quicker, even little stuff like uh, the exhaust smell. Uh, 
uh, you know, before. Uh, just the engine design because of how it's an inline six, it's a long engine, small carb in the middle. Certain cylinders are richer than others, but based on smell, it's definitely burning off. Like I don't think any of the cylinders are running, uh, are not, they're not running too rich. At least it's not, it's getting burned now. So uh, temperatures were good. Drivability was good. Nothing changed other than it's just better all around. So much more enjoyable experience, much more fun to drive. Now it has the power. Uh, there's, there's confidence in pulling out with traffic coming that it's not gonna stumble. And that when you do shift the gears, when you get back in the throttle, it's gonna pull much quicker through first, second, third. Um, so yeah, I, I like it. You know, there's, I'm sure there's other brands out there. Pertronics is what I searched and found and people said it was okay. And that's what's in is a Pertronics um, ignition, the uh, electronic ignition module on their flamethrower two coils. And uh, absolute amazing improvement. I see the pants, you know, this, this engine was rated as 85 horsepower stock. That's at the crank. Uh, who knows, there's, there's probably, by the time you have your, your parasitic losses through the drive line, there's probably only maybe 45, 50 horse at the wheels on the ground, uh, but it feels like it gained five. Uh, it's definitely, definitely improved. So uh, I've got nothing bad to say. The installation was easy. Uh, you know, had the little snafu on the ignition timing, which is kind of hard to figure out because there's no good timing marks on this engine that you could look at or, or match up. And of course, we put the distributor back in where it started but with the uh, ignition module on the plate and the changing and the mounting, it changed the timing enough. We actually, I had to move it about uh, about probably three teeth worth of distributor gear and then tuned it back in with the adjustment. But overall, easy, easy peasy changeover and the performance difference is significant. Well worth, I think it's right at about $220 invested in the module and the, and the coil uh, and the shipping. Worth every penny. If it continues to run and the, the durability is good and it continues to perform like that without issues with the module failing or something, worth every penny. Uh, highly recommend it or at least upgrading. Because uh, like I said, you can't really tell that it's not, if you're a, a stock appearing guy but want drivability, definitely the way to go. You can even put a ballast resistor back where it should be and just bypass around it to get full voltage and still look completely stock and have much better performance out of the engine. So anyway, successful day, good drive. Finally got that uh, Protronics ignition system on there. Very happy with it, and I hope we have many years of good service out of it without any failures. So we'll keep you updated. Stay tuned. More from Fiery 49 coming soon.